Hi there, and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to use a Session Drummer in Logic Pro 11. So this video is actually a brief overview of the Session Drummer. I cover this and the other Session players in a lot more detail in my complete Logic Pro course. If you're interested in learning even more about the Session players and Logic Pro in general, then I recommend checking out my complete course, which you can access by the link in the description below. Okay, so let's get started with this video. So let's start from scratch and let's create a new track by pressing the Tracks button up here, or by pressing the key command, Option, Command N. So a Session Player is a customizable virtual instrument that provides a human-like performance. You can see here that we have a Session Drummer, Bass Player and Keyboard Player. Let's start off with the Drummer, so let's click on this. You can see that when we select this, we have this Drummer Style drop-down list. With this, we can choose different Drummer Styles, and we can also choose Electronic Drummer Styles and different Percussionists. For this though, let's just select the first one, which is Pop Rock. And now let's hit Create. You can see here in the editor window that we have this drummer editor. This is where we can edit different things. Now let's first of all play this back and have a listen to this pop rock playing style. We can tap on the icon of the drums here to choose another playing style. Let's do this now so we can hear the difference. Let's choose the next one, which is retro rock. So you should have seen the region update there, and let's hit this back and you'll notice it should sound different. Okay, let's choose another one. Let's click on the Session Player region so we can see it in the editor. And let's choose a playing style from the Songwriter collection. Let's try the first one, Funky Songwriter. Okay, let's hit this back. So you can hear that some of these playing styles are very different. So you can obviously hear that the patterns are changing when we choose another playing style, but the drum instrument or drum kit is changing too. So we can click on where it says drum kit in the inspector or mixer, and this will open up the drum kit designer. For this example, you can see it uses the sunset kit. But let's now choose another playing style. Let's try one now from the alternative collection. Let's try indie rock. And you can see there it's changed to the Brooklyn kit. Let's play this back to hear the difference. So you can actually change the drum kit presets or tweak the instrument if you wish. For example, let's change this drum kit designer to another preset sound. So let's press the right arrow here. And let's hear this pattern now with a different drum kit. For this example, it's the Detroit Garage Kit. so you can hear it's the same pattern, but it does sound very different with this different drum preset. We can also change some of these drum instruments if you wish. So let's click on the kick here, and let's actually change the kick to this Brooklyn kick. Let's hit us back now. And drawing playback, I changed it to another kick. We can also use this drum kit sound, but with the other playing styles. So it'll play the other drum patterns, but on this drum kit. To do this, make sure you deselect Change Patch. If this is enabled, Logic will change the drum kits for the different playing styles. Generally, it does a pretty good job, but let's say you want to have it play on a specific kit, you can uncheck this. Okay, so now let's choose another playing style. Let's try Garage Rock. And now the pattern or playing style will be different, but it will use the same drum kit we used before. Now though, let's check Change Patch, and let's have a listen to one of the R&B playing styles. Let's try the first one, Modern R&B. So you can hear that playing style is very different from what we just previously heard. But let's actually go back to the very first one, which was Pop Rock. One thing to mention, when you change the playing styles, it can change the tempo as well. Okay, let's now have a look at some of these controls in the drummer and let's look at how we can customize this part. First of all, we have complexity. So we can make the pattern more simple if we drag this down, and we can make it more complex if we drag this up. We can see the pattern update in the region when we adjust this control. Okay, I'm going to play this back now and adjust the complexity slider so you can hear the difference.
then there's intensity. So we can drag this down so the performance is softer, or drag it up so it's louder. Again, we can see the region update when we adjust this, and let's play this back again, and I'll adjust this so we can hear the difference. Okay, let's now have a quick look at the patterns area over here in the middle. We can click on these patterns and choose another pattern. So we can change the pattern for the kick and snare, and also for the hi-hat, ride or tom. We can also click on these to enable or disable them. So we can choose to have the kick and the snare, or just one of them, or neither of them. But for the hi-hat, ride and tom, we can only choose one of them. Okay, let's play this back and hear some of the different patterns. So drawing playback, I'll swap between the different patterns. I'm just going to click on the cycle range area up here to enable this, and set this to 8 bars so it loops round and round. OK, let's play this back. We can also type in a pattern for the kick and snare if we wish with the manual tab. Let's start off with something simple, so let's have the kick play on every beat. And let's have the snare on beat 3. So each of these is a 16th note and four of them is a beat. So the bottom one here is the kick and the top one is the snare. OK, let's play this back so you can hear the difference. We can also adjust this manual pattern drawing playback. So I'm going to play this back again, and this time I'm going to change the pattern drawing playback. I'm going to put the snare on beat 2 and 4, and I'll adjust the kick pattern as well. OK, let's do this now. OK, so you can see it's really straightforward and simple to change the pattern for the kick and snare. Let's go back to the main tab now and have a look at the controls on the right. First of all, we can change the amount of fill with this dial. So we can move the dial to the right and it will add more fills. And we can move it to the left for fewer fills. We can also adjust the complexity of the fills with this complexity dial. So you can have the fill pattern more complex by moving it to the right. And you can have it more simple by moving it to the left. Then we can add some swing. 66% will give us a perfect swing. You may wish to use this for a shuffle fill or for creating a classic triplet fill. This will be a bit more obvious to hear when it's on 8th note swing, but we can also click this button down here and change it to 16th note swing. We can also lock fill amount and swing with the padlock icons here. So if you're happy with these settings and you don't want to change them, you can lock these so you're less likely to accidentally adjust these dials. But for now, let's unlock these. And let's just play this back and adjust these dials and switch between 16th note and 8th note swing so you can hear the difference. OK, let's do this now. We can also press regenerate down here, and this will give us a slight variation of the pattern while keeping the settings or controls in the same place. So let's just click this now, and you can see the pattern update in the region. OK, let's now have a quick look at the details tab. First of all, you can see we can add ghost notes. Ghost notes are soft, subtle notes that are played on the snare drum. These notes are so soft they're almost ghostly, which is why they're called ghost notes. 
I'll play this back and adjust this ghost note style so you can hear the difference. So if you want to add some ghost notes, it will add some texture, dynamics and groove to the drum part. OK then down here we have some drop down options for the snare, percussion and hi-hat. By the way this last option actually changes when you select a different drum instrument in the main tab. So right now it says hi-hat, but if I go back to the main tab and change this to the ride symbol, and then go back to the details tab, you can see it's changed the symbols. Let's also change it to the tom drum, and again we can see it's changed and this time to toms. For now though, let's put this back to the hi-hats and let's have a look at the first drop down option which is for the snare. This allows us to choose what type of snare we want for our performance. So right now it's on automatic, but if there's a specific type of snare that you have in mind, you might want to play around with these here to find one that's closer to what you have in mind. So let's just have a quick look at these now. So we can choose center, and this will hit the center of the snare, which is a standard sounding snare hit. Then there's rim shot, which is where the drummer hits the stick on the snare's rim. Then there's side stick, which is a rim tap. Then there's tom, which will actually replace the snare with the tom drum. For now though, let's change this back to automatic. OK, let's now have a look at the percussion drop down. So this allows us to add some percussion to our performance. We've got tambourines, shakers and claps, and we have three different patterns for each of these. I'll play this back again and select a few of these so you can hear the difference. For this though, let's select off. OK then we've got the last drop down list here, which currently says hi-hat. This allows us to select different ways the hi-hat is played. So this is how the foot pedal is pressed on the hi-hat. So you can see here we have these different options. Let me just go through some of these options now. Let's first look at closed. So if it's on closed, then the foot pedal will be pressed all the way down. If it's on open, then it won't be pressed at all. Or we can have somewhere in between with half closed or half open. We also have wide open. By the way, open means that the symbols are slightly separated, and wide open means the symbols are fully separated. Let's just hear this now. Open has more control and can be used for grooves, where wide open has less control and can be used for crashes, accents, or for dramatic moments in the song. OK, let's now go back to the main tab, and let's actually swap this over to the ride symbol. Let's now go back to details, and you can see here it's changed the symbols. So it's not just the ride symbol, you can see we have other types of symbols as well. So of course we've got automatic, and we've got ride, let's hear this now. So this is a ride symbol, and then we have ride bell, so this is where the drummer is hitting the bell or the more central area of the ride cymbal. Then we've got ride crashed, which is where the ride cymbal was playing more like a crash cymbal. This gives us a much louder, washier sound compared to the ping sound of the ride. This might be useful for rock or more energetic styles of music. Then we have two different types of crashes, Let's play this back and I'll swap between these two crashes so you can hear the difference. OK, let's now swap this over to the tom drum. And now let's talk about these tom settings. By default this is on automatic, but we can select one of these tom drums if you wish. Obviously the low toms are lower and the high toms are higher. 
and the mid toms are in between. Let's just play this back and I'll swap between these three different tom drums so you can hear the difference. Let's start with tom low. Okay, so that's the main tab, details tab, and manual tab, and that's basically a really quick overview of the session player drummer. We also have the electronic drummer and percussionist, as well as the session bass player and keyboard player, which I cover in my complete Logic Pro course, as well as the chord track that allows you to input chords for the session bass player and keyboard player to follow. So if you're interested in my complete Logic Pro course, where you can learn more about the session players and Logic Pro in general, then be sure to check out this course for the link in the description below this video. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like, and if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing for more videos like this. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.